1.9. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Leading a frontal assault on the lies of the New World Order, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. It's Sunday, April 6, 2014. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host today. But Alex is going to be joining us with a special report in the next segment. He's also going to have an interview that we had earlier this week. Highlights from his interview with Ron Paul. It's one of the best interviews I've ever heard with Ron Paul it's going to be talking about, of course, geopolitics, the Ukraine. What's going to happen to the people of Ukraine? How does that fit into a reasonable foreign policy? As well as the future of Rand Paul, a whole variety of issues that Alex Jones discusses with Ron Paul. Again, that's going to be in the second hour of the show. And we've got a lot of news today. We're going to be taking your calls. Uh, some amazing news just broke the last couple of days. It turns out that the State Department under Hillary Clinton misplaced $6 billion. Gee, who'd have thought? That's, that's billion with a B. Uh, she's now wants to run for president. I guess that qualifies you. I mean, if you're that, uh, is, is it dishonesty or is it incompetence? I don't know. But apparently, neither one would disqualify her from running. Um, she's the Democrats front runner. But it's not just the Democrats. We see the GOP whoring itself out for sale to Sheldon Adelson. It's not just the little Sheldon Addison caucus that happened uh, about a week and a half ago where you had Jeb Bush and Chris Christie and a couple of other governors went out and sucked up to Sheldon in Las Vegas. But now he's pretty much demanding that the GOP hold their convention there. And he's got a lot of clout. He gave $100 million to the GOP in the 2012 presidential elections, just for his presidential elections. What does that kind of stuff buy you? Well, it buys you bans against your competitors. The Sheldon Adelson is trying to get online gaming canceled, and he's got a lot of help, not just from Republicans, of course, but from Democrats, too. Remember, Harry Reid is from Nevada, and it was a bipartisan bill that was introduced in, I think, both houses already to try to outlaw online gambling because, you know, they could be very competitive to Sheldon Adelson. He wants people to come to Vegas. He wants them to go to his casinos. That's a much more profitable thing for him. Uh, of course, if somebody doesn't have that kind of overhead and you don't have the money to travel, you might just start gambling and doing that online. That would be a lot of competition for him. And, you know, that we see that pattern over and over again. We see that happening. There's another story from Reason Magazine today we're going to be talking about where in Florida, for example, they're going to outlaw craft breweries. That's right. If you want to brew beer in Florida, you're going to have to run that through a distributor first. So if you've got a small restaurant that's brewing beer, uh, you're going to need to sell that to a distributor, then buy it back from that distributor to sell it into in your restaurant because that's what the big guys want. Similar to what's going on in New Jersey, of course, where you see the Automobile Dealers Association trying to shut out Tesla because they don't use automobile dealers. They sell directly. So we see over and over again, this is a pattern, whatever industry it is, the big guys come in and they control it because they want something out of government. So we're going to be talking about that. We're also going to be talking about Captain America. I saw it yesterday. It's amazing. It's great. You need to see that as, as, whether you're looking at it for the politics or whether you're looking at it as filmmaking or just looking at it as entertainment. It's a fantastic movie on all three fronts. No spoilers. I'm not going to give anything away. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the article that was up on Drudge about what the director said, what his intentions were, and how he incorporated all of the civil liberties issues that are on the front burner get incorporated into this movie. And folks, that's really a powerful thing. When you see these issues, we talk about it on the news all the time. And we will cover it in documentaries, show what happens to people. But when you see it in a dramatic narrative, that really can wake people up. A very, very powerful film. I hope that you go see it. I hope you take some friends who maybe don't really appreciate where the police state, where the surveillance state is leading us and the danger of that. That's a, a great film. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Also, we're going to have a clip of some creepy, predictive uh, things about technology and the police state from 2007. Brian Williams and NBC ran this piece back in 2007, talking about what life was going to be like in 2017. And all the things that you and I don't like, if 
you don't like the police state as much as I don't like it are there. So we're going to be having that. We're going to that's something that's kind of been the background. But stay tuned. We're going to be right back. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Sunday, April 6, 2014. Now, this week, we had a tragic shooting again at Fort Hood. About 20 people were shot in a period of only about 10 minutes. And, of course, we had a couple of reporters go up there, Kit Daniels and Jakari Jackson, to the press conference. They asked the general who was giving the press conference, they asked him how long it took for people to respond, because that's one of the issues. Should people be armed there? But the other big issue that nobody else was asking either was... Was he on an SSRI drug? Because this has been the common link in all of the mass, sh mass shootings. And the answer was yes. And Alex Jones has more information on that right now. An active shooting scene in Texas, a shooting at the Fort Hood Army Base and the Texas Department of Public Safety. Four people are dead, including the shooter, and the number of injured has jumped to 16. At 5.05 this evening, we were notified by officials from Fort Hood that there had been a uh, shooting incident uh, over there. This past Wednesday evening, we saw yet another tragic mass shooting at a U.S. military base. Of course, just last year, we saw the Naval Yard shooting, and sure enough, it turned out that that individual was on multiple psychotropic drugs. And within hours of the latest shooting at Fort Hood that claimed the lives of four people and injured 16, including the shooter who died, we learned that he was on a, quote, cocktail of drugs, starting with Ambien, which its own insert admits can put you into a zombie-like trance state where you can go out and engage in violent acts literal psychotic breaks. The inserts for the drug admit that it is a hypnotic antipsychotic that is extremely powerful and can cause someone to not even know what planet they're on. But this is something given to millions of Americans and dubbed a sleeping pill. No, ladies and gentlemen, Ambien is not a sleeping pill. And the larger issue here is when are we going to wake up to the fact that in almost every mass shooting and almost every military mass shooting, the soldiers and the general citizens are on different types of psychotropic drugs, whether it be Luvox, whether it be other drugs in the Prozac family or Ambien, all of these drugs own inserts admit it increases suicide, causes megalomania, causes people to go on psychotic rampages, causes people to black out and not know who they are. And the bigger issue here is it's getting worse because we have a record number of 22 servicemen and women committing suicide every single day in this country. 
Suicide deaths outnumber combat deaths now for four years running. The number of suicides that we're now seeing in the military are seven plus fold the previous record at the end of the Vietnam War in 1975. This is an epidemic. And the system's answer is to throw more pills at the troops whose own inserts say causes you to have increased suicide. It's just like I told Piers Morgan last year. You've got all these serotonin reuptake inhibitor antidepressant ads on, and you're here blaming gun owners for what happened at Sandy Hook when the reported shooter, it turned out, was on multiple, you guessed it, psychotropic SSRIs yet again. How about Prozac? You know the number one, oh, that's the big sponsor, isn't it? Or that whole class of drugs. Let me ask you a question. Oh, whoa, gotta cut that off, don't you? No, don't want to talk about the U.S. number one cause of death is suicide now because they give people suicide Calm mass down. murder pills. Calm down. Your answer is get more money to the psychiatrist Fine. and psychologist Let's, to put more crazy people on drugs that make them kill people, Pierce. You take some video game head, obsessed with shoot 'em up games, you put them on drugs that put them in a trance state, what do you think is going to happen? Same thing with soldiers. You take people who are serving, on average, four tours now. That's never been done before. Some of them as many as ten tours in heavy combat. The most was two in Vietnam or World War II. And then you put them when they're upset and depressed on hard core drugs that whack them out of their minds, what do you expect is going to happen? Separately, our reporters, Shikari Jackson and Kit Daniels, drove to Fort Hood from Austin and sat there through the press conference as softball questions were thrown out. The only reason it came out that the reported shooter, Ivan Lopez, was on drugs was because our reporters, the reporters from InfoWars.com, asked the question. And they went on to point out that if it was a 15-minute response time for the military police to get there, why wouldn't we then allow concealed carry on the base? And the general said, oh, no, I want the professionals to be able to have guns. You know, we don't want to have our military, who supposedly fights for our Second Amendment, to have the right to defend themselves. Here are some excerpts from that press conference where the lieutenant general, the commander of the base, responds to questions from InfoWars reporters. Was he on any sort of medications? He was on medications, that's correct. Like SSRIs or antidepressants, anything of that nature? Yes. What are your thoughts on carrying concealed weapons? You're not allowed to carry concealed weapons. Do you think that should change? Uh, no, I don't think so. should have concealed weapons on both. We have law enforcement agents. Uh, we're trained professionals, and I, and I don't endorse carrying How long did it take weapons? for the law enforcement to reach the scene? Uh, it was within minutes. Within the minutes. Exact time, probably 10 to 15, maybe. So exact. you're saying that we should have concealed weapons, but it still takes 10 to 15 minutes for law enforcement to even reach the scene. What's your comments on that? I think the law enforcement acted very rapidly uh, and swiftly, uh, given the nature of this circumstance. I understand that, but there's still people yeah, that I'm not have died. Get in a debate uh, with you on carrying weapons on a military installation. Quite frankly, I'm surprised that the Lieutenant General Miley was even honest about the fact that the shooter was on a drug. And we've now learned at least three drugs, including antidepressants, a dangerous cocktail. Usually, government works to hide that fact. But come on, General. Crime statistics don't lie. Concealed carry massively lowers crime. And it gives the general population, whether they be on a military base or whether they be in their private home, a chance to protect themselves when a criminal or a mass shooter tries to attack the general population. But regardless, deer kill more than 200 people a year jumping out in front of cars. Mass shooters only kill about 165, and most of that is gun-related. So in truth, the, quote, scourge of mass shootings is nothing but a giant hoax. Cancer kills hundreds of thousands a year. Car accidents, hundreds of thousands. Uh, Drug-resistant strep kills hundreds of thousands. Guns used in mass shootings kill less than 200. And the truth is, the FBI's own crime statistics show it. Violent crime is down 51% since 1992, directly because of increased gun ownership and concealed carry nationwide.
It's time to really start caring about our military and not making them serve five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tours. It's time to give them the real counseling and the love and support they need, not hop them up on a bunch of drugs so you can later declare them mentally ill and strip them of their Second Amendment. Because that's the real agenda here of abusing our military.